Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we are currently taking our colony core out to the moon. And that will be absolutely great. So we need to choose when we want to go here. And I think the answer would be sometime around here-ish. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that gives us an encounter. Is it a good encounter? I mean, not right now. That's for sure. Uh, come on. Let me modify the maneuver. Thank you very much. Okay, other direction. Change timing. Got it. Okay, so that's decent. That's very decent. Probably a little too low. We'll bring that up to around, I think 15 kilometers will be absolutely fine. There we go. Something like this. Cool. Now, Traley's Heap is in a 10-kilometer orbit. We could target a 10-kilometer orbit, to be honest. I'd just like to have a little bit of margin there, but we can adjust it. So we can bring this up to be something like this. We could get into a more equatorial orbit. This is not particularly equatorial. So we could do something a bit more along the lines of... Come on up. Kind of like that. And then, of course, we'll have to back that out a little bit to about here. Cool. That looks good. So that's about 800.7, 808.7 meters per second here. So that's over half of what we've got in this tank. Let's go ahead and rotate this on over and prepare for this burn. Over we go. Eventually. <laughs> this is not the fastest rotation speed. That's to be expected, to be honest, with what we've got on this. So we will position for that. Okay, close enough. And we'll probably have to make some minor tweaks on the way there, but that's okay. No big deal there. It's going to be slightly off in terms of a direct prograde burn, so we don't want to lock to prograde. That's for sure. We'll come on around here, get our batteries charged on back up. And we'll just position about... About here-ish. There, that'll do. So we'll warp forward a bit. And we are at about 10 seconds. Cool. Two, one, mark. And off we go. Hello, moon. We are on our way. Cool. So we'll drop our colony core here. And we're going to have to do multiple moon landings here, of course, to get this colony set up. This is going to be a minimum of five landings. So that'll be absolutely fine. 800 meters per second to go here. 700. I'm reading this off, not this. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no explanation for this. Let's chase this node a bit here. There we go. And that's probably good enough. Let's see what we're at for our periapsis here. 13 kilometers. Okay, let's just pop over to prograde here. And actually, we could just leave it here. I think this is good enough. Yeah, that'll do. That will do. So at this periapsis, we will go ahead and do a retrograde burn. Bringing that on around and breaking down to something kind of like this. Cool. So the question is, where do we want to set up our colony? I want it to be equatorial, perhaps in like this crater here. We'll see. We'll see what that ends up looking like. We're going to need like a mobile processing lab in there for sure. A, a science module will, will very likely be our next project. Okay, so let's head on over for this. We're going to start this burn in about three hours. And as we can see, uh, this is going to be most of what we've got here. We're going to have about 200 meters per second left in this tank, which we can use for our braking burn. So it looks like we're going to be landing on this as planned, and we're going to burn out all of this fuel. That's perfect. This may not actually be the case with Minmus. We'll see. Okay, let's go ahead and warp here. Cool. So this is going to be a pure retrograde burn, right? So we'll hop over into the moon's sphere of influence here takes a little bit running parallax or that might be the copernicus beta i'm not sure 
but we will go ahead and head on over here. Fantastic. Got a nice ugly seam, but now it's gone. Perfect. Okay, we're going to continue to warp here. 40 seconds to go. 30. 20. And 10 seconds to go. So right about now. Cool. So again, this is going to be the vast majority of the fuel here. But not all of it. Definitely not all of it. So our apoapsis is coming on down here, and we will just... Uh, ah, this is close enough. That's close enough. So if we go into surface speed here, we can see exactly what we've got here. 542.8 meters per second. So realistically, do we want to land in this crater? Or do we want to land in this one? I'm leaning towards this one right now because that's coming around into the light, whereas this is going into the darkness right now. So in that case, sometime around here-ish, we should make an inclination change and go this direction, kind of like that. Cool. 89.7 meters per second that can come out of this tank. That's always nice. Okay, so let's rotate for that. We're not going to be going back to retrograde for now. We will be going back to retrograde eventually, but not right now. Also, I want to check what this periapsis will be. Uh, that'll be fine. We're probably going to want to toss in a little bit of retrograde, though, at some point. Uh, it'll be okay. It'll be fine. We've got more than enough delta V here, and I just want to check. Yeah, we've got plenty of thrust to wait. Cool. So that'll be absolutely fine, and we will prepare for this burn in about four minutes. Okay. There we go. And we will commence the burn shortly here. About another minute. 40 seconds. 20 seconds. And 5 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. Mark. Okay, we overshot a bit there. Uh, how much do we overshoot by? It's fine. It's good enough. So at this point, we can definitely flip to retrograde. I'm going to physics warp as we turn. Because we want to pull this apoapsis down a bit. And we're basically at the periapsis here. So this, this timing for the burn is completely okay. Let's go ahead and bring this on down. Targeting about... There. Cool. That'll do. So next up, we want a timer around here-ish, I think, and then we bring this back by, like, uh, maybe not exactly there. Maybe about here. Okay. We're not actually concerned about this number here. All I'm just evaluating there is timing. So that'll be fine. We've got 78 meters per second left here. So let's go ahead and warp around to that timing. And we're going to have to park at retrograde, of course. We're going to be wildly off of retrograde. But that's completely okay. Checking in on our electric charge here it looks reasonable. Cool. So we will flip around to retrograde here. And this is the crater we're going to be looking to land in. So we're going to want to fire up our engines shortly here. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, mark. Okay. And let's go ahead and extend our landing legs here. Just double checking our thrust weight. Looks good. Looks very good indeed. So we're just coming into a horizontal burn here. We don't care about this number. It's irrelevant. We're just trying to kill our horizontal speed. We are going down right now, and that is noted. But I'm not too concerned about that. We are watching this number here and not being particularly upset. I kind of like this landing site here. So let's bring our horizontal speed down to approximately zero meters per second. That's 50, 30, 10. Okay. So now we're just going to flip to retrograde here. 
And we're probably going to aim for more over here. So we may want to change that. I don't really like this position necessarily. So let's head off over. I need to figure out which direction is which here. Uh, not this way, the other way. Over here-ish. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Let's do something kind of like that. Cool. Yeah, that's more like it. Excellent. And we'll head on in here. So we're going to be watching this countdown here. I'm going to let it go down to like three seconds this time. Five is a little much, I feel like. And yeah, if we look at our retrograde here, we're going to be parking about here. That's about right. It'll be a little further this direction as we break, but that looks good to me. So down we go. We've got about 20 seconds until our burn. And again, I'm going to burn it slightly early. Very slightly. About 10 seconds here. And we'll burn it starting right about now. Cool. And we'll get a solid breaking burn going here. And we'll let it fall again. Man, this feels fast. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It always feels wrong when we're doing it like this. But okay. From here, we can just manually do this. So we're very gently decelerating here and noting that this is decreasing. That is perfect. That is exactly what we want. So we'll just go into stability assist here and just gently burn our way down. So it looks like we have a little bit of an incline here, but I think we'll be okay. Not too concerned about that. The minimus flats will be a little easier, but it's okay. We have a bit of a sideways drift, but it should be fine. Our added wide stability makes things good there. We are sliding a little bit, no doubt about that. Uh, we're not sliding so much that we can't quick save though, so it's all good. Now the question is, is this really where we want to establish a colony? Well, we are sliding, so that's a concern. We could lift off and do another landing somewhere else, somewhere a little flatter, like over here. That would be reasonably ideal. Oh, hey. We uh, crashed something into the moon. <laughs> Perfect. And got a seismic reading from it. Excellent. So that's great. And we got, we got that contract completed. And... 238% from impact energy. Wow. Okay. That's kind of huge. Okay, so the question now is, do we want to land this here? Realistically, I do feel like over here would be slightly better. Somewhere over in this area. Or just down here. To a certain degree, the moon is what it is, right? And it's not going to be particularly flat. We're not going too quickly downhill here, but we're definitely sliding. I think let's give it a go. Let's take off and head this direction. Things are a little bit inverse from what I'm expecting here, but I'm just watching our destination go here. And I want it to go to about here. Okay. Now we'll flip to retrograde. And we'll keep an eye on this. This is nearly all horizontal speed. But we're just trying to get away from this incline over here to somewhere slightly flatter. It doesn't have to be super flat. So this will be fine. We're about 20 seconds here until our second landing attempt. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. And burning. Okay. It always feels too late, but there's a reason for that. <laughs> okay. Let's bring this on down so that we're going a little bit more straight down. 
cool. And going on to stability assist here. I want to be holding this speed. This looks much flatter here. There's a lot of rocks, but that's to be expected. How's that? I feel like this is a better location. Yeah, I don't think that we are currently uh, sliding anywhere. So that's perfect. That'll be a much better spot. We can go ahead and grab a crew report here. Not that we're necessarily planning on bringing this back, but we can process this these things in the science lab, I'm pretty sure. We're going to EVA report. We're going to grab a surface sample. Those things will get stored inside of here. Then we're going to have Lembert EVA again. I believe we have a contract to drop a flag here. Plant flag on the moon. Yes. Okay, so we'll let go, and we will head on over this direction. Apparently going the wrong way there. Perfect. I accelerated into the ground instead of decelerating, but we'll go ahead and plant our flag here. There we go, Lenbert. And we will call this the Moon Colony Site. Perfect. Okay. And now we will head on back in. Oh, RCS isn't on. That would help. Okay. So one thing I want to... Actually, I don't feel like we need to extend this ladder, but we could test this here. Okay, cool. Let's extend this ladder and test to see if this works fine. It does. Always good to test these things when you're on the moon and can't fix it. Well, actually, we could. Lenbert could fix it, so that would be fine. But it does work absolutely as intended. Perfect. So we're going to hop back in here. And that's those contracts done. So let's hop back to the Space Center. And at this point, we need to be starting to think about our science lab. We definitely want to have a science lab. And I believe we need to have at least one scientist in the science lab. I think. But we want to get that science wing going. And that's going to be a little bit awkward to lift off as I think about it. Oh, this bug? That's unfortunate. Let's hop into Mission Control here and see what we've got going on. Extract ore from Minmus. This is something that we are planning to do. We don't have to take this ore anywhere. Just extract it. And we are planning on having a mining segment. So let's do that. What else do we have here? Not a whole lot. Okay, cool. So let's hop into... I realize you can't see anything here. This is a, this is a lighting bug. I mean, it is night. Maybe it's not a bug. Maybe we just don't have our lights on. Let's warp to sunrise and see if that changes it. Okay, yeah, there we go. Cool. So I guess we just don't have lights. <laughs> Perfect. Well, let's go ahead and hop into the VAB. And once we're in the VAB here, we are going to open up our colony core. And we're going to modify this. We are going to be lifting the same thing functionally. But we're going to be getting rid of these modular girder segments. We're not going to be landing in this orientation. We're going to get rid of these docking ports as well. Those are not necessary. We're going to get rid of these telescoping hydraulic cylinders. Also not necessary. Now, this up here, this antenna, we don't actually need. We can get rid of all of this in the fairing for right now. And we can put in our docking port here. But we don't actually want this module here. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to definitely have this be remote piloted. So we're going to use a Probodobodyne Hex again. And on top of that is going to go the docking port. Basically covering the whole thing. Then we're going to attach this, but we're not going to actually have that be the case. We're going to ditch this hitchhiker storage container. And we're going to put in here a... Let's see, we need to go into payload. We need a service bay. We're going to put a 1.25 meter service bay here. And then we're going to also put on a Science Junior. That is going to be a thing that we're going to need. And we're going to need, inside of this service bay, all of our experiments. So, we're going to need the Science Junior. That can go here, sure. We're going to need a Mystery Goo Containment Unit. We're going to need a Mobile Processing Lab, eventually. 
Okay, we're probably gonna wanna rearrange some of this, but for now, we'll see. Okay, so a Mystery Goo Containment Unit, we're going to want a Magnetometer, actually, and we can just attach that out here. There we go. We're going to need a Press Map Barometer. There we go. A Thermometer, which is this guy up here. Cool. A negative gravioli detector. We're going to need a seismic accelerometer, if we can happen to get any data from that. I don't know that we will, but we're going to reuse it on other worlds, so it might actually end up being useful. Uh, what else do we not have in this? Let me just think here. Um, scanning our mystery goo unit, mobile processing lab, gravioli detector. We don't have the atmospheric fluid spectroveriometer. This is not going to be useful on the moon or Minmus, but in other locations it will be. So we could toss that in. Cool. And then we would also want a battery of some type. So a big old battery unit here would be ideal. All we have is a Z200. Alternatively, we could put like radial mounted Z400s out here. That's an option. We could cram them into the service bay, but I think we'll avoid that for now. We could put just like two radial mounted ones like that. Now, the power module is going to have the primary battery capacity, but this will do for now. I'm definitely concerned about what we've got here in terms of size disparity. So we need to have this thing be horizontal, not vertical. That's the thing. So when we get onto onto the world. The orientation of this needs to be like this, right? We're going to be lifting it off vertically, but we're going to be landing it horizontally. So we need to consider how exactly we want to land that. That's going to be interesting. So we are going to need some... Essentially, this is going to be like an oversized rover, right? We need some wheels on this, and let's see. I'm just thinking about the size here. We don't want it to be in that symmetry mode, that's for sure. These wheels are kind of small, and uh, <laughs> the symmetry mode is not really what we're going for either. So we're probably going to end up having to do something kind of like that, but I'm wondering about these wheels. Potentially. Obviously, this is not the position we're going to want them in. But if we were to do something like this, these guys would need to be... Maybe in mirror mode this would work better? Definitely not. Okay, let's flip that on around. So these need to get flipped, right? So that means that we need to do this, unfortunately like this. Obviously, again, these are way, way too high up. <laughs> way too high up. So we need these to be adjustable height of some description. That's for sure. So we'll detach these for the time being, and we're going to put in a modular girder segment. That's kind of big. A cubic octagonal strut? That's actually better. Okay, so a cubic octagonal strut would be mounted there and there. Then we're going to need some adjustable height. We'll do the same thing out over here with cubic octagonal struts, positioning them there. And we'll snap those into position soon enough. But we'll just do that. And we'll just build one of these for right now. We'll duplicate the rest. So we'll get rid of all of these and get rid of all of these wheels. I have no idea if we're going to launch this this episode. Looking at the time, probably not. <laughs> but we'll put this in here, and here's what I'm thinking. We need adjustable height on this. So we're going to put in a robotic hydraulic cylinder. The hydraulic cylinder is going to be attached um, like this. Then another cubic octagonal strut, perhaps, or we just attach it straight onto here. Uh, let's see what the wheel would end up. Mm, these are like 90 degree angles. 
So probably not on that front. We will put in another cubic octagonal strut. Right there. And then attach the wheel onto that. Like so. Now the question is, is this going to be too high by default? I don't know. And we should probably have like six of these guys, realistically, at the bare minimum. I think four is too little. And we'll of course have to flip this around like that. Okay, for the time being, we're gonna take this, get rid of it. This is going to be the colony science unit. Okay, so let's put this on the pad and give it a little bit of testing here. I'm not expecting us to immediately have everything work the way I ex uh, the way I hope it to. We're going to have to run multiple testing units of it, so that'll be fine. But that'll be mostly something for next episode. What I want to see here is, do we need to inverse any of our wheels? Hmm. It looks surprisingly decent-ish. I feel like these middle ones probably shouldn't have steering enabled on them. Okay. And of course, we can come to a stop with our brakes action group. The question is, is this already too high? And in order to test that, we're just going to hop over to a simulated positioning here. We'll set position on the moon here. I have no idea where this is in relation to our current craft there. Uh, we can use middle mouse click to set position, I suppose. And come out over here and try to set the position as being here. That's pretty close. We'll see where that actually is. Of course, we're gonna revert this, for the record. This is a simulation. I just wanna make sure that we're not sitting too high to be able to dock to this. Well, this isn't awkward at all. <laughs> okay, well, that's not awkward at all. And this is like two kilometers away. So we'll set our position over here. This is still like a kilometer away. So we'll set our position over here, over here, and now over here. Okay, we've managed to dial that in. Trying to rotate us before we hit the ground here. Cool. Now we broke some of our wheels, I think. Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't break our wheels. Cool. Now let's turn our brakes off and we're just going to head in up over this direction. We will control from here, and we'll set this as our target. Okay. All we're checking for here is that we're not sitting too high to dock. Our angling isn't perfect. We're not sitting too high. Okay, that's all we needed to know. So we'll revert that back to vehicle assembly, and that is great. It is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode... We are going to see how we want to go about lifting this contraption. That's going to be interesting. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Casserol, ALS Gamer, Kentuin, James, Shadow Wolf, Mlohan80, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Video Games Are Not Real, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Unisol, Kadra, Rogue Corvid, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.